must admit I feel very exposed right now. <laughs> Those two are getting out of Dodge before the big winds come on Saturday. Today, we've got to up the anchor and move it about 20 meters that way. Because tomorrow and Sunday, there's a large wind coming through, which is gonna give us about 30 knots of sustained wind, gusting up to 40 knots. It's all part of the summertime Meltemi here in the Aegean Sea. Our anchor is in, the holding here is fantastic, it's mud. The reason we've got to move is because there's a boat in behind us and they have an anchor marking buoy and we can't let any more chain out because if we did, we'd run over their buoy and that possibly could entangle with our prop or our rudder. So, up anchor, move that way, drop anchor, let all 50 meters out in preparation for the big blow that's coming. Today I'm going to make a snubber. We've already got one, but we like to have redundancy, so I'm going to make a second one today. And I'm recording it because a couple of subscribers have asked to see how I actually do splicing. First, I spliced a loop. Then Baz got involved with some rope and a big rubber shock absorber by threading the snubber line around it. Then I spliced in a metal thimble. And I finished off with a bit of whipping. So this end goes through and around the cleat. This end gets attached to the anchor chain and we let out enough anchor chain so that this whole rope becomes tight, but it's got flexibility and that takes the weight and the strain off the windlass. There you have it, a snubber. We're going on an adventure today. Woo yeah, we're going to hire a quad bike probably. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> have a scoot around and see what we can see. Yeah, we're going to go to the old town, we're going to go to the monastery that's perched on the edge of a cliff, and the smallest church in Greece. Ooh. We're also going to check out from land the two proposed scuba diving sites. From land, we can really scope out whether we can take the boat there yeah. and whether it's worth actually going there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to today. It's going to be a hoot! <laughs> we soon arrived at the Cora Old Town and loved what we discovered there. church in Greece. Yep, I think we found it Baz. I think we have. It's tiny. <laughs> it is tiny. And that is it. Isn't it sweet? That's actually attached to another building which is also a church. Yes. So. Maybe this was the original. This could have been the original, yeah. It is the smallest church in Greece. How good is that? Mission accomplished. Take it! <laughs> we continued north to check out the first dive site. 
but it looked as if there was a bit too much current running through, given that I'm a novice diver. That's, that's beautiful, isn't it? Where that boat is? Yeah. That's where the dive site is. But I would imagine it would be a bit of uh, current, current coming, coming through. through. might be a bit tricky for somebody like you could probably do it. After that, we headed to Agialis Bay. We found the bay with the wreck that we wanted to dive on the south of the island. But unfortunately, the swell was just too great to consider diving there. The way the wind is blowing and the way the waves were coming in and just the general swell, it made it feel unsafe. On the way back north, we discovered the monastery perched 150 metres on high steep cliffs on the eastern side of the island. Before returning the quad bike, we had time to explore one more place, the Minoan ruins just outside Catapala. Murray, this one is for you. We are at an ancient Minoan site on the Greek island of Amorgos and you would just love to touch this stonework. This is craftsmanship. Look at this corner work. This is amazing the way they've actually gone, okay, this is the face of the rock, this is the side of the rock, let's make a corner. And you can still see the chisel marks. Look at this. We've got an odd shaped rock. I know, let's find another one and stick both of them together. Look at that seam. There's another one of those joints, look. So tell us all about it. Well, okay. All that remains of Manoa now are the Cyclopean walls, the gymnasium and the foundations of the Temple of Apollo. But Amorgos has been inhabited from as early as 3300 BC, I'm reading this. And its peak was during the Cycladic civilization when there were three cities, Minoa, Arcassini, and Igiali. Wow. So there you go, 3300 BC. And they could do awesome stuff with big blocks and with just- Chiseling out. Chiseling out. <laughs> I found a big stone, sir. What can we use it for? I know, we'll use it for the side of the door. <laughs> and here we can actually see that the, the big stones on the outside are filled in with all the little stones on the inside. Seems to be quite a common practice to build that way. Ooh, I wonder what that was for. You can see they've actually carved a sort of like a roundish shape into the stone. And it goes down to the stone below. If these stones could speak what sort of stories could they tell? Should we go and take a look at the other stuff? But this looks like a, a natural sort of set of steps and an entryway they've built. Oh, look at that. Oh, how clever. So they, they would make the statue in segments and to keep them the segments together they would put a hole in the middle and then I'm assuming that the piece that went on top of here 
had a sticky out bit of stone at the bottom that went into that square. Genius! Oh, and here at the threshold, well, you can see that they've carved out a place where, I guess, a, a wooden upright would go, that the door would be hinged on. So there's one on that side, and there's one here on this side. And in the middle is a place for the lock to go into to keep the doors locked into place. How good's that? <laughs> we think that we're the first, you know, amazing civilization just because we've got sort of technology. But when you think what civilizations before us achieved, it's quite incredible, isn't it? It's amazing. Humanity is just very creative and resolves puzzles. 5,000 years ago? Yeah. Wow. You know, okay, I want to do this, how are you going to do it? Oh, let's do it this way, with that particular mindset. With another mindset, different culture, different civilization, you get something slightly different. Yeah. Amazing. That's brilliant. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up, son? I want to be a stonemason, Dad. I want to build things. <laughs> well, you're in the right era for it, son. <laughs> Well, the sun is going down and we must get our quad bike back to the rental place before they close for the night. But we had to see this place. Well, that was a fantastic day out. I'm so glad that we got the quad bike and we saw some great places. Now it's home, James. That's it. And you all know what time it is, don't you? <laughs> it's time for a cup of tea, love, isn't it? Cup of tea, nice <laughs> cup of tea and a slice of cake with Aunt Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wurzel Gummidge. It's Tuesday the 2nd of August and today is the day that we're upping anchor from the bay here at Katapala in the Greek island of Amorgos. The holding here is very good. The bottom is mud. And we know that because since we dropped anchor here, we've had to move several times. Moved on by the port police because there are several ferries that come in and out of here through the week. Uh, and in particular, the Blue Star Line ferries. They're very big and when they come and drop anchor, they're very loud and they get very close if you're too far out. So I'll include a graphic from Google Earth with some lines on it to give you a better understanding of how the ferries drop their anchor where they reverse into and why the port police ask you to relocate if you're outside of the the zone so to speak we're not leaving Amorgos completely just yet we're actually going back up the coast a little bit to a nice bay that we spied out from the land yesterday when we did a tour of the island on the ATV we're going to drop anchor there for at least one night and we're going to try and scope out see if it's scuba diveable or not after this, we're island hopping to two smaller islands, which may or may not have internet connectivity for us. And then we're going to Ios, the Greek island of Ios, to meet up with our friend Jim on Acheron once again. If you liked our video, we'd love you to subscribe. Just hit that big red button down below. If you loved our video, share it on your favourite social media and spread the good vibes. And if you want to join our ABC family, head on over to our Patreon page.